G'day everybody, it's Mitch here again with the 1925 Ford Model T and in this video we'll be looking at an old trick for starting your Model T in cold weather um, or if you're, if you're finding it's just a little bit difficult to start uh, on uh, cool mornings. So basically what the trick entails is, um, is jacking out one of the rear wheels. Now, if you've seen some of my earlier videos, uh, you'll know that the, uh, the Model T has a wet clutch. That's to say that it runs in a bath of oil. Now, what tends to happen is when the weather is particularly cold or um, when the engine's cold, uh, what tends to happen is the oil will congeal, particularly in exceedingly cold temperatures. It's a, the oil thickens up and what that does is it has the effect of basically the car behaves like it's in gear, even when it's in neutral. So what we actually do to get around that problem um, is we, we still put the car in neutral but we jack up one of the rear wheels and we chock the opposite wheel so that the car doesn't try and move um, when once we start it. Um, so basically what we're doing by jacking up one of the rear wheels is it frees up the entire drivetrain so that you're not trying to turn over the entire transmission system when you're cranking the car over. So without further ado, now this car is actually stone cold, I haven't started it today. So what you're about to see is, um, is basically starting the car from cold um, but jacking up one of the rear wheels. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get cracking. So we'll prime the engine and, uh, and then we'll get it started. Now you'll have to forgive my camera work. I'm trying to do everything here, um, holding the camera in one hand and uh, doing the work with the other. So what we'll do, first of all, <coughs> we'll open, the, uh, open up the hood. And we'll go ahead and we'll turn on the fuel like so and now it's time to prime the engine and again if you've seen my previous uh, uh, Model T videos you'll know that uh, you'll know basically the the starting procedure so we'll go ahead and prime now okay so what we want to do is pull the choke out which is this piece of wire on the bottom left corner of the radiator and then holding the wire out two, three, sometimes four cranks with the key switched off because we don't want the car to run over us um, two or three, um, maybe sometimes four cranks to pull fresh fuel from the fuel tank to the cylinders so in practice we pull the choke out lock the crank in and remembering this is the only time we crank with our right hand and then we let go of the choke and now we're ready to uh, jack up one rear wheel to make it easier to start. Okay, so what we have here is the original jack that came with my uh, Model T when it was brand new back in 1925. And as you can see, not a lot to it. It's uh, quite simple, just a regular screw jack with a, um, with a little uh, latch here which basically locks into this uh, sprocket wheel here. And depending on which way round you have it depends on uh, will actually determine whether you're jacking the car up or down. So we'll go ahead now and uh, we'll pop that underneath the uh, back axle and we'll jack up one rear wheel. Okay, now you can see here that the um, the jack obviously hasn't actually quite reached the axle. Now we don't actually have to crank it the whole way to get it there. The little trick to it is if you just lift the centre portion up and then turn this wheel clockwise. So that it locks in to the little wheel at the bottom and now you can see we're ready to start jacking now to go up we've got the handle on the right hand side of the jack to go up this little lever here needs to be facing you so that when you turn it you can see we're now going up and it's just a very simple ratchet and all we need to do is just about get that back wheel off the ground like so. And you can see now the wheel's off the ground just enough 
so that we can now commence starting. But before we do that, we've got to go ahead and chock the opposite rear wheel so that the car doesn't roll over me when I try to start it. Okay, so all we're going to do is I've got a block of wood here and a brick. So we'll just put those under the front and the back of that rear wheel. So now we can be certain that the car isn't going to go anywhere, even though it's in neutral. Um, it's just a, a good safety measure, just to make sure that the car doesn't move when we go to start. Okay, so starting a Model T with one back wheel off the ground is a little bit different to how we normally start it. Um, ordinarily we'd have um, the handbrake engaged like it is now, so that the car obviously can't move and we've got the transmission in neutral. However, when we're starting with one rear wheel off the ground, we want that wheel to be able to turn um, to make things a little bit easier for ourselves. So what we actually need to do is release the handbrake just to the middle position, just like we'd be doing if we were pulling forward in first gear by pushing the left pedal. So what we actually want to do, have the handbrake in the middle position, not all the way forward of course, because that would actually put the car um, into top gear, we don't want to do that. We'll leave the car in neutral, handbrake released, and then it's just the regular starting procedure. Retard the spark fully of course, and open the throttle a little bit, probably about a third of the way down, something like that. Maybe half a dozen notches down the quadrant there. And now we're ready to go ahead and start. So what we'll do is we'll turn on the ignition here. Okay, it's just slightly out of time there, that's why the coils stopped like they did. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and start. Okay, so just remember this, this, uh, this is from Stone Cold, so it might take a few attempts to start, it might take start straight away, we'll have to wait and see. So we've already gone ahead and primed, we've uh, jacked up one rear wheel and we've chopped the opposite one, we've released the handbrake and we've got the car ready to start. That is, we've opened the throttle a little bit and we've turned on the ignition. So let's go ahead and see if she's going to start for us. So remember, left hand to start, keep the thumb out of the way, and let's see what happens. As you can see, even though the car's in neutral, that back wheel's still turning. Um, what's basically happened is because the oil in the transmission has thickened up, um, it basically, the car behaves like it's in gear even when it's in neutral. That's why the Model T can be difficult to start if the engine is cold and uh, more, more specifically if it's particularly cold weather. So what I would do now is let the engine run for maybe five minutes or so, let the engine warm up. And then what we should be able to do is actually apply the handbrake and the engine should keep running. So what we'll do is we'll let the engine run for a little bit and then I'll apply the handbrake. We'll rev the engine up a little bit just so it doesn't stall. We'll apply the handbrake and uh, the engine should keep going. Okay, so I've just checked the engine. It's quite warm now. It's been running for about uh, five minutes or so. What I'll do now is I'll just rev it up a little bit and then we'll apply the handbrake and we'll make sure that, that, uh, that the engine keeps running when that back wheel stops spinning. So I'll put the camera in position now and uh, we'll see what happens. Now as you can see the uh, the wheel has stopped, engine's still running, so we're good to go. So 
So as you saw there, the uh, the car was much easier to start, and it was only about, oh, I'd say, seven or eight degrees Celsius um, in the shed this morning, starting this car up, and it was quite easy to start. Um, you probably heard there it coughed and spluttered a bit uh, when it first got going, but uh, none of the more for that, it was a lot easier to start. Now, if I'd have tried hand cranking that with the wheel on the ground and the handbrake on, I'd have been here all day trying to start it. So that was an old trick that they used back in the day and it pretty much worked every time. So now all that's left to do, and don't forget to do this one otherwise you'll be in a fair bit of trouble, is uh, remember to uh, take away those wheel chocks, now you've got the handbrake on, and of course let's remove the jack. Now to take the jack out is just the reverse of what we did to put it in there. We flip this little catch over to the back and we basically push up like so. And you keep going and it gets gradually easier the further down you go and there we go you can remove the jack and again so you don't have to wind this all the way down um, I'll just try and hold this camera so you can see what I'm doing here all you need to do is lift it up turn the wheel counterclockwise all the way up to the top and then the jack is nicely folded away ready for next time and again just don't forget to uh, take those wheel chocks out. Otherwise, you might have a bit of an uncomfortable ride getting the car moving. <clears throat> so just <clears throat> and that's basically all you do. So, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope it was informative. And uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel. Like us on Facebook. Check out the website. And uh, we shall see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.